Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase All right, let us turn to page number 303, please. Right. So, page number 303. The method of conditional relations. The 24 conditions. I will read the Pali just to familiarize ourselves. Hetu Pacheo, Aramana Pacheo. Adipati Pacheo, Anantara Pacheo, Samanantara Pacheo, Sahajat Pacheo, Anyamanya Pacheo, Nisse Pacheo, Upanisse Pacheo, Pure Jata Pacheo, Pacha Jata Pacheo, Asevena Pacheo, Kama Pacheo, Vipaka Pacheo, Ahara Pacheo, Indriya Pacheo, Jana Pacheo, Manga Pacheo, Sampayutta Pacheo, Vipayutta Pacheo, Atti Pacheo, Nati Pacheo, Vigata Pacheo, Avigata Pacheo. And these are the 24 conditional relations. The English. The following is the method of conditional relations. One, root condition. Two, object condition. Three, predominance condition. Four, proximity condition. Five, continuity condition, continuity condition. Six, connaissance condition. Ten, prenaissance condition. Eleven, postnaissance condition. Twelve, repetition condition. Thirteen, Kama condition, 14, result condition, 15, nutriment condition, 16, faculty condition, 17, jhana condition, 18, path condition, 19, association condition, 20, disassociation condition, 21, pr presence condition, 22, absence condition, 23, disappearance condition, and 24, non-disappearance condition. Guide to verse 11. The 24 conditions listed above form the subject matter of the Patana, which presents a detailed exposition of the ways in which they interrelate the mental and material phenomena enumerated in the Dhammasambhini, the first book of the Abhidhamma Pitaka. In order to properly comprehend the Abhidhamma teaching on conditional relations, it is essential to understand three factors involved in any particular relation. One, conditional states. Pache Dhamma, so I've skipped the table. Hmm. One, Pache Dhamma, the conditioning states. Two, the phenomena, sorry, conditioning states. Pache Dhamma, the phenomena that function as conditions for other phenomena, either by producing them, by supporting them, or by maintaining them. 
by producing them, by supporting them, or by maintaining them, right? By maintaining them. Can we put a star or a highlight or however it is that you would usually make a note of important? The conditioning states, the phenomena that function as conditions for other phenomena, either by producing them, supporting them, or maintaining them, pachya dhamma. Two, the conditionally arisen state, pachya upanna dhamma. Pachya upanna dhamma. The states conditioned by the conditioning states. The state conditioned by the conditioning state. The phenomena that arise and persist in being through the assistance provided by the conditioning states. Supported by the conditioning states, the conditionally arisen states maintains and persists itself, arises and persists itself. And three, the conditioning force of the condition. Conditioning force of the condition. Pachaya sati. The particular way in which the conditioning states function as conditions for the condition states. Function as conditions for the conditioned states. So we have Pachya Dhamma, which is a state, the conditioning state, the phenomena that functions as condition for other phenomena by producing, supporting, or maintaining them. And then we have Pachya Upanna Dhamma, which the conditioning state gives rise to and maintains or allows it to persist. And the connection through which or by which power does this state allow the rising of the conditioned state that is Pachya Sati. Is that understood, everyone? Right? Pachya Sati. In the following sections, Acharya, Anuruddha will explain how the 24 conditions structure the relations between the different classes of phenomena. Instead of proceeding to explicate each condition in their original order, he classifies the conditioning states and the conditioned states as mind, matter, and mind and matter conjoint mind, matter, and mind and matter conjoint, and then introduces the conditions pertinent to the relations, pertinent to the relations between these classes in their six permutations. In elaborating upon these sections, we will call attention to the three factors involved in each condition when they're not immediately clear from the text. Right. Now, table 8.2. The 24 conditions and their varieties. We have one, the root condition. Two, object condition. Two, object condition. Give me a moment. One, root condition. He to Pachaya. Two, object condition, Aramana Pacha. 
three predominance condition, Adipati Pachaya, right? So now in our discussions, we have um, in certain areas, we've, we've spoken of, about, okay, this phenomena arises because of this condition. We've, we've, we've brought in little examples here and there, haven't we? Right. So now in the study of Abhidhamma, when we go through the text, what we would then understand or be able to sort of say is by which law this conditioned state has arisen, what conditioning, what conditioning tendencies allowed that state to arise, and by what power did it arise? Those three parts. Pache, Pache Dhamma, Pachu Panda Dhamma, and Pache, Pache Sakti. When we go through the 24 conditions, then we find that the conditions, 24 in number, some of these conditions, they offer a variety of ways that they can support. Hence, we find for example, if we take the eighth one, support condition. So Nisaya Pacheo, we have the, under the support condition, we have the conascence and the prenascence. Then the pre, the base prenascence and base object prenascence support. Right? Now, of course, you know, in that manner, we should be able to then sort of understand the natures and the way these nature, natures condition. Now, let's just quickly go through. Predominance condition, object predominance and conascence predominance. Four, proximity condition. Fifth, con con contiguity condition. Continuity condition. Conascence condition. Mutuality condition. Eight support condition is say pachaya, conascent support, prenascent support, base prenascent support, base object support. Nine decisive support, object decisive support, proximity decisive support, and natural decisive support. Ten prenascence condition, base prenascence to object prenascence. Eleven post prenascence condition. 12, repetitive condition, 13, comma condition, one, conascent comma, and asynchronous comma. 14, result condition, 15, nutriment condition, material nutriment, and mental nutriment. 16, faculty condition, under the faculty, prenascence faculty, material life faculty, and conascence faculty. 17, jhana condition, 18, path condition, 19, association condition, 20, disassociation condition, conascence disassociation, prenascence disassociation, and postnascence disassociation. 21, presence condition, under which conascence presence, prenascence presence, postnascence presence, presence, nutriment presence, faculty presence. 22, absence, ab, absence condition. 23, disappearance condition. 24, non-disappearance condition. Right? Non-disappearance condition. So yes, it all sounds a little bit intimidating, isn't it? Right? So don't worry about it. <laughs> all right. Now, we're just going through it. We've not come into defining, right? In the following sections, verse 13 to 27, Acharya Anruddha will explain. Oh no, we read this part. Did we? Yeah. Right here. In table 8.3, the conditioning and the condition state for each condition are listed following the traditional order. Are listed following the traditional order. Verse 12, application in brief. In the six ways, mind, in the six ways, mind 
is a condition for mind. Mind is a condition for mind. In five ways, mind is a condition for mind and matter. Again, mind is a condition in one way for matter and matter in one way for the mind. In two ways, concepts and mind and matter are the condition for mind. In nine ways, the dyad mind and matter is a condition for mind and matter. Thus, the relations are sixfold. Right? Now, in five ways here, no, here, in six ways, mind is a condition for the mind. What does that mean? Right? For the arising of a mental phenomenon, in six ways, meaning six conditions, six conditions comes into play or can come into play where mind is a condition for mind. Does that make sense? Right? So we will be going into it. So six out of this becomes or can condition the mind, condition the mind, or the mind can be the condition for the mind. Is that understood? Manasa hinda manasa katagata. In five ways, mind is a condition for mind and matter. In five ways. Again, mind is a condition in one way for matter and matter in one way for the mind. So this is essentially then what we will be learning here. How does one become the condition for the other? Right? Does that make sense? How does it become the condition for the other? In two ways, concepts and panyapti and Nama Rupa are the condition for mind. In nine ways, the dyad mind and matter is the condition for mind and matter. Thus, the relations are sixfold. How? Verse 13, mind and matter. Mind for matter. Right? Mind for matter. In six ways, mind is a condition for mind. In six ways, mind is a condition for mind. Consciousness and mental factors that immediately, consciousness and mental factors that immediately sees are a condition for present consciousness and mental factor by way of by way of proximity continuity absence and disappearance absence and disappearance just highlight that section please right is there a chart later on? Yes, there's a chart. Renaissance. See. No, better highlight it. No, better highlight it. Right, consciousness and mental factors that immediately sees 
are the condition for present consciousness and mental factors by way of proximity, continuity, presence, and disappearance. Now let us. Continuity. Continuity. Sorry, sense. The word is contiguity, isn't it, Bante? Continuity. Continuity. Contiguity. Contiguity. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Continu contiguity. Yes. All right. Thank you, Zidata. Right. So here, uh, consciousness and mental factors that immediately cease, that immediately cease, meaning when a consciousness and the mental factors arise, consciousness and mental factors that immediately cease, as they arise, they cease, right, are a condition for present consciousness and mental factors. How does that make sense? If a chakku vinyana does not arise, then the chitta following the chakku vinyana in what we have learned with the Viti section, the chittas following chakku vinyana will cannot arise. Right? So as support, as a conditioning factor for the next chitta, these, the dhamma before it, the dhamma before it conditions the mind for the arising of the mind. Do you understand? Right? How this essentially then happens, we will discuss further down as we proceed. Consciousness and mental factors that immediately cease are a condition for present mental factors by way of proximity, contiguity, absence, and disappearance. Absence and disappearance. Preceding javanas are a condition for subsequent javanas by way of repetition. Preceding javanas are a condition for subsequent javanas by way of repetition. Why is it repetition here? Repetition is because the javanas do exactly the same function. Isn't it? The javanas perform the same function. Right? Now, before we move on, I can sort of... Um, does anyone want me to explain a part of what we have gone through? Or go over? Do you have any questions? No? Can I... Can we continue? Ante, uh, it, it will be better if you if you uh, go through the table 8.3, mm -hmm. which, which is um, quoted in the previous uh, uh, paragraph, mm -hmm. and look at it and give us a brief explanation. Mm, a brief explanation. No, no, because it's caught in the previous eight. We actually went through the table 2.2 .2 instead of, sorry, um, instead of 8.3. 2.2. Now, if you go to the previous table, 8. Point, no, actually, no. here, table 8.3. 8.2. 8.2. No. Ah, okay. Actually, it says 8.3. 8.3. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ah, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Damsari. I missed the 3 and 2. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So All then, right. You, then you can see actually condition, conditioning states and condition states very clearly. Mm, mm, mm. All right. All right. Now. Right. 
conditioning and conditioned states of the 24 conditions. One, Hetu Pache, root condition. The root condition is conditioned by, sorry, the root condition enacts itself with the support of the six roots, right? Enacts itself with the support of the six roots, loba, dosa, moha, aloba, adosa, amoha. The conditioning, conditioned states because of the six roots, because of the force of the six roots, what arises? That is conditioned states. Is that clear, everyone? What arises? 671, 71, uh, rooted. Uh, 71, <laughs> 71, rooted. I was like, is that retired? <laughs> rooted. <laughs> Not retired, rooted. <laughs> 71, rooted chittas. Right? All chittas with roots, those with roots, arise owing to root condition with the support of the six roots. Do you understand? 52 Chetasikas, excluding delusion, connaissance, with two delusion rooted chittas, matter born of rooted chittas, matter born of rooted chittas, kamma born matter, kamma born matter at rooted rebirth, kamma born matter at rooted rebirth. Right at rooted rebirth. So everything, everything that would arise with root, everything that would arise with root, we cannot take anything excluding everything without a root. Excluding everything without a root, right? Again, 71 rooted chittas, 52 chetasikas, right? Because the 71 rooted chittas would associate these chetasikas in a rise, right? Excluding delusion connaissance with two delusion rooted chittas, Material born of rooted chittas, come born material at rebirth, come born matter at rebirth, at rooted rebirth, at rooted rebirth. Right? So, as we are going through it, mind you, the way that the conditioned states are. sort of quoted, the way that it is quoted is a little bit different from what we've done before. Because here, they, we have to go into a lot of detail as to know what we are including and what we are excluding. Right? What we are including and what we have to exclude. Right? Does anyone have any questions with regards to this first one, root condition? I feel like it's a bit overwhelming with the faces. Is it? Okay, let's do root condition again. 
ಪಠಾನ you need to have a clear um, knowledge and uh, memory of the um, 89 121 chitta the 52 chesikas 28 rupas um, uh, 28 rupas uh, when they arise what are their roots bases functions right so really an all round understanding of chitta chetasika and rupa right chitta chetasika and rupa so in these sections it is really a polishing up if we might take it in that manner it is really a polishing up right a polishing up of of uh, in a way of the chitta chetasikas and rupas that are going on and what their essential functions are right so we'll do rooted a root again root condition again right root condition hetu pachaya hetu pachaya the condition of root or hetu the condition of root or hetu leads to the arising of the conditioned states with the support of the six roots if the support leads to the 71 these states supported by the six roots greed hatred delusion non greed non hatred non delusion what are the conditioned states if we take the chittas first what are the chittas that can arise with supported by six roots hetu hinda hataganna chitta dharma kumat so then we take 89 chittas and deduct the 18 rootless consciousnesses hence we are now left with 71 the 71 chittas arises with their chetasika counterparts supported by the chetasikas hence 71 rooted consciousnesses and 52 chetasikas is that understood everyone is that understood everyone right then we have excluding excluding delusion conascence with two delusion no excluding delusion conascence what is this can delusion arise alone delusion can arise alone right delusion can arise tanha arises with dosa uh, sorry tanha arises with delusion dosa hatred arises with delusion 
and delusion can arise alone as well. Here, we take out the delusion, excluding delusion, conascence. Here, we are referring to the taking, we take out the delusion here because does anyone have an idea? Because it's got only one root. Because it <laughs> no, 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 no. It's got only one root. No. no. Mante, I, th I think uh, it is okay because now Loba has got two roots, Loba and delusion. Moha has got two roots, Moha and delusion. But delusion has got only one root, so that uh, it can it can't uh, it can only be a condition. Uh, you can't have a. Uh, I tell you, um, because it's only one root, it can't be a condition, conditioning factor, and a condition factor both. Correct. It can't be a condition factor and a conditioning factor. Why? Then we are quoting one dharma twice. Yeah. We are quoting one dharma twice. Hence, we take out that delusion, right? It makes more sense. This is the art. I mean, it, tr it truly is an art. Patana is an art on its own, right? And you find this now last week and in earlier sessions that you, in your private study, in other discussions and deshnas that you've listened to in books that you've read uh, with regard to the Patija Samapada, you understand that Patija Samapada has its own structure. Patana has an entirely different structure, right? Has an entirely different structure. The Patana structure is different to Chitta, Chetsika, Rupa structures that we've already gone through. The way that those parts are compiled, right? Because the focus within the Patana is entirely different. Within the Patana, what we are talking about is how the relationship between Dhammas, what are the supporting factors? Why does this arise? By what power does it arise? Right? So the focus of Patani is entirely different. This you will come to understand for yourself as we go through these, this chart actually. Because it shows you how the divisions are made. Right? Don't take it as numbers. Try to understand the meaning. Right. Right. Then we have Chittas. Right. Okay, Chittas. That we we've done this. Now matter. Born of rooted chittas. Matter born of rooted chittas. This, uh, sorry, this 71 rooted, these 71 rooted chittas and 52 chittasikas would condition the arising of matter. We have to take all of those matters. Why we don't say, why we don't quote a number and then say why they haven't quoted a number and then say these are the chittas. The reason for that is because th those matters could arise because of rooted consciousnesses and consciousnesses are, which are not rooted. Do you understand? Those rupas which exclusively arise conditioned by 
the 71 rooted chittas and 52 chetasikas. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Now, I'm just grabbing a number out of, you know, thin air. What if we say 12 rupas, 12 rupas, right? If we say 12 rupas, then those rupas, those 12, for example, it's not a number. Those 12 must exclusively be only rooted, which can't be because materiality arises because of rooted consciousnesses and those consciousnesses which are not rooted. Isn't it? Right? For example, the, the Ahetuka Chittas, the Ahetuka Chittas support the process of seeing. The Ahetuka Chittas are Kama Vipaka. Right? Now, any sort of rupas arising by whatever force of the Ahetukas have to then be taken out. That is why we do not quote a number in this case. Because if you quote a number, it must exclusively be for that purpose. Hence, we say matter born of rooted chittas. Matter born of rooted chittas. And come born matter at rooted rebirth. Come born matter at a rooted rebirth. Do you understand? At a rooted rebirth, it must be defined with that amount of clarity there. Let's go to, let's, shall we go to the other one just to understand? Maybe we'll understand the earlier one better then, right? Object condition, Aramana Pache. Aramana Pache. 89 chittas, 52 chetasikas, 28. Rupas, Nibbana, and concepts. Through the condition of object, through the condition of object, condition the arising of 89 chittas and 52 chittas. 89 chittas or and 82, I'm sorry, 82 chittas and 52 chittas. 89 chittas, 52 chetasikas, 28 rupas, nibbana, and concept, concepts. These conditioning states all take objects. Because of that reason, owing to this condition, supported by these ultimate realities, I'm sorry, by these phenomena, arises 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. Right? 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. Why we, the reason, hold on, sorry, the reason as to why we do not have rupas in this section is because objects are always taken by mind. Objects are always taken by mind. Hence, the conditioning states lead to the arising of 
the conditioned states. Do you understand? The 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. If we take an example, Damsiri. Um, Bhante, can you ex explain this way also? Uh, you, uh, you can take one of the 89 chittas as object to 89 chittas, any of the 89 chittas and 52 chaitasikas, because one of 52 chaitasikas can be taken as object for the formation or creation of 89 chitsas or 52 chaitasikas or uh, Nibbana can be taken as an object for some of the chitas and chaitasikas. Yes, yes. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, and and concept also. Yeah, yeah. Concept. So panyapti would include everything else. Yes. We see in if we might say an alternate reality to paramatta dhamma, the samuti dhammas will also take in a samuti dhammas as object. We give rise to eight nine chittas and fifty two chittasikas. Right, 52, 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. In taking the object, we can take one of the 89 chittas and the 52 chetasikas, 28 rupas, nibbana, and all concept as object, which is essentially what an object is. Right, mano. In a Manodwara Vajana Chittaviti, a mind or a mental process, we see the taking of a mental phenomena as object. When we take a certain meditation, let's say focusing on a specific part of the body, we would take that Rupa as an object. When we, in the pathway towards enlightenment, we take the Pala Chitta as object. Hence, the ultimate realities as well as the concepts can all come into being taken as object, which leads to the condition arising of the conditioned state. 89 chittas and 52 chetasikas. And 52 chetasikas. Why doesn't this have, why doesn't it have, for example, rupas as the condition states? Can rupa what is the reason that Rupa, we don't find it as a conditioned state there? Think of how a Rupa can arise. Bhante, is it because when you when the object is a Rupa, you take it as the Chakvinyana or Sotavinyana in the mind? Is that it? The essence of our manufacture is the taking of objects, which is essentially then only to do with the mind. Only to do with the mind. Right? Does that make sense, everyone? Or oh, Rupa cannot uh, create a rupa, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we do that though? After yeah, origin, the, the, the rupa cannot, now you can't generate rupa from rupa. 
you can't generate a rupa from a rupa is correct yeah, yeah. but rupa yeah. does not create rupa is not correct remember remember how it works rupa yeah uh the kalapas yeah okay how they multiply yeah okay yeah that's right yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's okay bhante also the ahara rupa so yeah. it's rupa from rupa rupa from rupa yeah well yeah rupa from the the input yeah. of yeah ahara ahara hmm. ahara rupa rupa from rupa they are arises yeah does everyone else understand that point right is everyone okay yeah <laughs> devika are you okay i saw your hand on your head <laughs> we can't hear you i no i but i've been ha having a very rushed day today in the doctors office getting so many things Yeah. so i'm a little messed up in mind <laughs> yes. yes i mean it is a lot but let's go yes. let's go on and then let's come back and see it again yeah but okay, okay. uh, but they can you explain where which stage in meditation you are in this uh, relation to this paragraph no no we are not in meditation in this in this regard this meditation is entirely different mm -hmm. right this would this would this can be applied to vipassana jnana from the get go but really from the get go you can't oh i see you can't apply it you can theoretically yes you can but practically very difficult almost impossible right later on in the later stages of vipassana jnana it can be applied or if the vipassana jnanas are been revisited then it can be applied but usually in a, from a practical perspective from the beginning if we take the first few jnanas from the beginning it cannot be applied from the get go why because it is a bit too heavy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. leading okay. leading to the further writing of vitarkas because of the vitarkas the samadhi will suffer because the samadhi suffers now that will arise okay okay yeah yeah understand yeah all right so we'll go to the next one predominance adipati pachya right adipati pachya adipati and adipati there are two one is aramana and the adi sahajat adi is sahajat when we use the word sahajat we might understand it a bit better than conascence sahajat right meaning those dhammas which arise together sahajat now object object predominance condition is the condition which allows the formation of the an element of a higher power within the arisen states it operates as object aramana through 18 concrete matter right now think about it like forget that this is difficult and all of that just think about this right adipati dharma 
when mind and matter arises, let's talk about the mind first. Certain dhammas within the mind become predominant over the rest. Adipati. Right? Become predominant over the rest. Is that understood? Becomes predominant over the rest. That predominance can be exercised or experienced or that law can execute itself in two ways. As object, I'm sorry, as Aramana and Sahajat. Right? And Sahaja. Let's look at Aramana first. Aramana Adipati. Sahajata Adipati. Not Aramana Pachaya. Aramana Adipati. Sahajata Adipati. Do you understand? Right? Aramana Adipati would the conditioning states would be 18 concrete matter 84 chittas excluding two hate rooted two delusion rooted body consciousness with pain body consciousness with pain 46 Chetasikas excluding hate, envy, avarice, worry, and doubt. And doubt. And Nibbana. Nibbana. Because or supported by these conditioning states, Arise eight greed rooted chittas, eight great wholesome chittas, four great functionals, no vipaka chittas, mind you, they are great resultants are not there because great resultants. Uh, Kamadipak. Chittas with knowledge. Eight supramundane chittas. Forty five chetasikas. Excluding hate, etc., and two illimitables. Hate, etc., and two illimitables. And two illimitables here. Let us quickly turn to. Right. Please turn to page number 316. Guide to verse 19. Predominance condition. 316. Predominance condition. Um, would you like, okay, like, I know I want this up here. Please use the book. Right. Of the two types of condition, of this condition, one, object predominance, Aramanadipati, is a condition where the conditioning state as object 
the conditioning state as object dominates over dominates over dominates over the mental states which take it as their object dominates over the mental states that take it as object only those objects which are esteemed esteemed cherished or strongly desired can become the conditioning state <coughs> sorry oh, sorry about that can only become the conditioning state in this relation why adipati pachcha there has to be a strong a strong grasping of the object for the object to become adipati remember what we studied earlier with regarding to objects aramana ati mahanta aramana mahanta aramana kuddha karamana ati kuddha karamana paritta aramana ati paritta aramana right in those forms the weaker forms are unable they are, they do not simply they do not have the capacity the strength to take an object which has been or which is weak i'm sorry let me reword that the object if the taking of the object is weak then that object cannot become adipati why it is it was taken weak right this is mostly about the attention the the desire the need the want the craving right this gives that sense of importance to that object so you take it more you take it more strongly you grasp you hold on to it much much more better stronger right only those objects taken as adipati i'm not using the word adipati as patana adipati meaning in a predominant manner can become the conditioning state according or at this condition do you understand hmm does that make sense everyone is it is it let's let's continue reading and come back only those objects which are esteemed cherished or strongly desired can become the conditioning states in this relation this condition is virtually identical with the object is virtually identical with the object decisive support condition differing from it only slightly in the conditioning forces that's not important as yet right let's move on to let's not read the rest of the paragraph that's not related to what we are doing right now the second one conascence sahajata adipati right so adipati pachaya according to aramana adipati we've read now we are doing sahajata adipati right is a condition where a conditioning state dominates condition states conascent with itself with arises with itself the conditioning state in this relation are the four predominance desire 
energy, consciousness, and investigation. Only one of these can take the role of predominance condition on a given occasion. And then only in jhana chittas with two or three, and then only in jhana chittas with two or three roots, again, because of two or three roots, because of the adipati. The conascent mental and material phenomena are conditioned states. The conascent mental and material phenomena are conditioned states. Are conditioned states. Now, let's come back here. Conditioning states. Aramana Adipati. 18 concrete matter conditioning states. 18 concrete matter. 84 chittas, excluding two hate rooted, two delusion rooted, body consciousness with pain. 47 chetasikas, excluding. Hate, avarice, envy, avarice, worry, and doubt. And Nibbana. Nibbana. Right? And Nibbana. What is Aramana Adipati? Is the condition where the conditioning state as objects dominates over the mental state which takes it as their object, dominates over the mental state that takes it as the object. Only those objects which are esteemed, cherished, esteemed, cherished, or strongly desired can become the conditioning state in this relation. Now, Again, look at this, right? Look at this, 18 concrete matter, concrete matter, right? Does anyone want to remind the whole class what the 18 concrete matters are? No, Eileen? Noeline, are you with us? Okay, Noeline seems MIA. Uh, anyone else? Who remembers the 18? Bante, is it the... Uh, um... Slowly, Noeline, please. I'm thinking uh, the eight faculties and the hard base. No? No, no, no. no. The first 18 rupas. The concretely produced rupas. Hey, Mali, yes? Yes, Bante. Earth element, water element, Holy. fire element, air element. Water, yes. And then eye sensitivity. Ear sensitivity, uh, nose sensitivity, tongue sensitivity, body sensitivity. Then visible form, sound, smell, taste. Then sexual phenomena, femininity, masculinity, heart phenomena, heart base, life faculty, and nutriment. All right, all right. The 18 concrete matter. I'm reading it again. Object predominance is a condition where the conditioning state, conditioning state as object, dominates over the mental states which take it as their object. Does that explain? Only those objects that are esteemed. Now, the second part of it. Thank you, Hemawale. 84 chittas. 
excluding hate rooted to delusion rooted and body consciousness with pain why i'm reading it again object predominance is a condition where the conditioning state as object dominates over the mental state which take it as their object only those objects which are esteemed cherished or strongly desired can become the conditioning state of this relation now look at the chittas again here 84 chittas excluding two hate two delusion rooted two delusion rooted and body consciousness with pain why is this why is it excluded two hate two delusion rooted and body consciousness with pain is it because they are adipati dhammas is that is is that why bante well they are adipati da i mean they fall under adipati <laughs> maybe that is why uh, these are excluded no 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 why someone else Anuma, would you like to give it a try? Hate. Look at the essence of this. Hate. Delusion. Body consciousness with pain. Are these things that we want? that we look forward to that we take in that same essence no that is why they are excluded that is why they are excluded because these are not phenomena that we take that by cherishing by grasping more isn't it these hatred is a repulsion on its own delusion is instability the inability to take an object proper the when you are deluded when you have a consciousness with the delusion chitta in it you are unable to comprehend what is happening you do not have a clear sense of what is happening body consciousness with pain again not something that we take cherish why because it must become adipati dharma do you understand that now what you would what what we would essentially then ask is yeah but when i hurt i hurt a lot huh? <laughs> i forget everything else <laughs> right we forget everything else but then we have to comprehend then we have to comprehend then what is or what becomes the object there what becomes the object there the essence of attachment and taking an object is grasping pushing something aside is another process right then 47 chittas excluding hate envy avarice uh, worry and doubt those are chatukayama aikara why because we don't have hate here already and delusion is also we've got rid of delusion here so hence the chaita seekers must reflect the chittas and then we have nibbana how does nibbana become a aramana dipati how 
how does nibbana become a arambana adipati because bante it's, it's that's the our goal because it is our goal okay okay uh, also its predominance above everything else like it's a adipati not really no 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 pre, pre, it doesn't become predominant nibban doesn't become predominant if man does not know what it is no yes because the aramanya is a strong sense of uh, predominance that's what i felt okay maybe okay. i'm wrong okay The, the, ulti- the ultimate end, I thought. No. Uh, nothing beyond that, Bante. Nibban is the final. No, no, yeah. you're not thinking religiously. Forget religion. This is not religion. Stop thinking about religion. This... <laughs> you're, you're being too religious. Stop with the religion. <laughs> And think about objects. Manasa vadakaranne koma. the end goal uh yes shyani all the conditions have some ceased by the time you attain nibbana no no if that is so if that is so how can nibbana be here shyani it's talking about conditioning and condition state itself Manti, there's no attachment there. No tanha. This is nothing to do with attachment. This is all to do with something that you want. Nibbana here. So, Hemal, you touched on it. Nibbana is a state that comes about through focus. the focusing of the eight four noble path the focusing of the uh, four noble truths the sapta vishuddhi the 37 factors of enlightenment all of this speaks about a mind that it, that is focused supported by of course that practice hence when we take nibbana what is nibbana the four Muggers and the four pallas is nibbana. The four muggers and the pallas. We do not see the palla before attaining the palla. We do not see the palla before attaining the palla. However, isn't that true? We do not see the palla before attaining the palla. Right. it is only after the manga chitta has arisen in the mind that one is able to now experience the pala chitta next that man, manga chitta will never arise in one's lifetime again but the pala chitta can be taken as object because the pala chitta symbolizes nibbana hence we say we experience nibbana four times in our lifetime i'm sorry eight mm-hmm. eight times in our lifetime with the mang and the palachitta right here nibbana is taken as object through the understanding of sunyata but it is taken as object where at that point nothing else comes to focus hence it is aramana adipati while you're thinking about nibbana and while you're grasping nibbana you're not thinking about your daily shopping you're not thinking about the million other things you have to do through the day it is only nibbana at that point creating that sense of predominance in not predominance i'm sorry adipati dominance over the mental continuum at that moment in time 
Hence, it is Aramana Adipati. Do you understand? Right? Now, let's talk about this. 18 matters, concretely produced matters. Right? Concretely produced matters. To understand this better, can we go into what are those matters which are not concretely produced? Himwali, would you be able to read that out for us as well? Yes, uh, uh, that is space element, uh, bodily intimation, vocal intimation, lightness, malleability, wieldiness, production, continuity, decay, and impermanence. Right. Right. Those are the non-concrete matters. The concrete matters in a way form the foundation and the essence of limitation for the other matters that Heya Mali just read out for us, isn't it? Right? The composition of Pataviya Potato Vayo, for example, the composition of Pataviya Potato Vayo, it is through that composition that we understand the limitations of wilderness, the limitations of space. Isn't it? The limitation. What is it limited by? We understand those aspects through the concretely produced matter. The concretely produced matter, hence, has that predominance as it can be taken as object to dominate over the rest of the mental continuum at that time. At that time. If we take Patavi, can the element, the root of Patavi, dominate the mental continuum at a given point in time? When taken as an object. When taken as an object. If it is not possible, for example, I mean, sorry, the Atavi Kasina is what allows or what allowed the Buddha to levitate up in the air. The water Kasina is that which allowed the Buddha together with the fire kasina, is that which allowed the Buddha to perform the twin miracle. Now, so you had to think about all of these areas, remember. Right? Now, when we are thinking about concretely produced matter, part can part of me have a predominant state or influence come up as a predominant influence for the mind? So then you must think, how can Patavi? Can Patavi become a predominant factor to saturate the mind at that moment? The Patavi Kasina Bhavana is essentially that. The hardness through the Vedanas that we feel, if we go into the Patavi Dhat, that is that. Yes, that is what we are talking about in our Ramanadipati. 18 concrete matters, 84 chittas excluding two hate rooted, two delusion rooted, body consciousness with pain. Is that understood why? Right? 47 chittas excluding hate, envy, avarice, worry, and doubt, and nibbana. And Nibbana. Is that clear, everyone? Is it clear? Right. Now, under Aramana Adipati, then 
the conditioning state being these arises these. Right? Arises these. What is that? Eight greed rooted chittas. Eight greed rooted chittas. Eight greed wholesome. Chittas, great wholesome chittas. Four, great functional chittas. With knowledge. Four, great functional chittas. With knowledge. Eight, super mundane chittas. And four, 45 chetasikas, excluding hate, etc. and two illimitables. Right? And two illimitables. Now, eight greed-rooted chittas arises as conditioned states. What is the commonality between these chittas? With wholesome, eight supramandi chittas, fortified chetasikas. What is the commonality, commonality between these chittas? Just the chittas are fine. Uh, maybe because this is something we desire. Even the greed root of chittas is something we desire, although it's unwholesome. You're grasping them. Those are the ones that you get mm. attracted to and you grasp them. Yeah. And you cling on to them. Four great functional chittas then? Those are kusal chittas, Bante. Ah, even there. <laughs> I don't know. Four <laughs> great functions. Yeah, hey, Mali. The huh? eight and chittas are the kusala chittas. Yes. So four great functional chittas? Kriya, Kriya. Kriya. In Pali, uh, can there be objects based? Can there be knowledge? Can create objects? Forget all of that. What do you do with these chitters? Think about what do you do with these chitters? Hang on to the objects. I mean, that itself, the, my, <laughs> my response itself is the answer. These are chittas that you do something. Perform kammas? Exactly. Exactly, Chamari. These are chittas. Yes, the kamma does not sort of sit well with if we take kamma as action. These are action chittas. Right. These are, yes, come because we had to be careful in the usage of the word karma because we had the functionals here. Right? But these are chittas that you perform something with. That you perform something with. Great rooted chittas, eight great wholesome chittas, four great functional chittas with knowledge, eight supramundane chittas are all chittas that you perform something with. Right? Perform something with. Here, because of the object predominance what is what is required you have to want the object you are grasping the object right hence hence functional chittas with knowledge with knowledge not you know not to sort of do in a wholesome, not a wholesome manner, but in an arahant fashion, 
with knowledge desiring an object. Right? Not in an Akusalagami way, without the attachment. However, with knowledge, why? Why with knowledge? Because of the if because of the need, the requirement, the intensity of mind which is required by Aramana Adipati. Arumuna Kwashing Adipati Dharma Pen. Do you understand? So when we relate, when we relate, when we relate to the mind of an arahant, mind of a arahant, we are speaking with regard to the functional chittas here, there, then we will only take arahants. Although we would sort of speak about the present moment awareness and all of that, does not mean that the arahant is taking all the objects around him. I mean, that would be absolutely just impractical to even think about, isn't it? You know, he is not the person, the Araha, the enlightened being, is not concerned with taking all the objects. But if he wants to take objects, just imagine the Araha is listening to Dhamma. Now, we must segregate. A person who experiences eight greed rooted chittas, and of course, a person who is experiencing the functional chittas with knowledge. Functional chittas with knowledge. It is true. It is through that. Sorry. We must segregate. We must segregate the mundane being from the supernatural being, super, super mundane being, right? Or else we'll not understand what, you know, what, what the scope of which we are talking about here. For a super mundane being, for a super mundane being, this sense of object that we take exists. But when we now, we are talking about not just a normal object, we are talking about an object that can become Adipati. Do you understand? An object for that Arahan that can become Adipati. So then what do you want? What do you, I'm sorry, what do you need? What is the requirement? then the measurement should be held in the standard of the being. Hence, although the Arahant is aware, he will be specifically inclined far greater to receive this specific object. For example, when the Arahant is listening to the Buddha, when reading the Dhamma, do you understand? When meditating, do you understand? It is only in that manner, it is only in that manner that it is because of that that we only take or what according to our Amana Adipati, there only arises functional chittas with three roots. Pratnya is there because that is how they grasp the object fully. Do you understand, everyone? When you're talking about functional chittas, you have to segregate that being from the mundane being. It is that being standard of mind. Do you understand? Is it clear? Bhante, this patana is a bit too heavy to digest. 
no no we'll be fine in a couple of days <laughs> but one day, day. One day, why they, why they have excluded the two illimitables karuna and mudita yes we will get there yeah. we will get there. right now then we have now i can't really see the reactions the facial reactions of uh, those with the cameras off but if you need me to explain to go back uh, over something you know let me know and i will be very happy to do so right it is oh we've gone over over time okay we've gone over time as well <laughs> seems like we didn't do much did <laughs> <laughs> all right now okay we'll do the rest we'll do this again next week right we'll leave it there for now we'll leave it there for now right leave it there for now and can i just ask that you that you sort of read through that you read through the sort of the descriptions that are given right so that we might be then able to understand what this chart is talking about also just to sort of you know uh, how we would usually uh, or how we learn is usually um, these two states the condition of course you know the condition and the conditioning state would be given but we had to determine what the conditioned state is right we had to determine what the conditioned state is so really what or what you know how we would uh, how we were taught, taught in burma is we would not sort of look at this sort of filled in chart but we would fill the chart and then sort of see where where we went wrong right where we went wrong um but of course for that uh, we need to sort of be absolutely clear and sure of uh, chitta chetika and rupa so if you need um you know to go back to those chapters and revisit those chapters to sort of have a more formulated idea of how these chitras work always do not look at the numbers just simply look at the story behind it how what is happening what is going on here right and what is going on here? this is literally talking about simply the way the mind works and the way the mind supports right how is it becoming a support how is it not becoming a support right so constantly question yourself as you sort of go over these sort of um uh the book right and and we will discuss again next week right discuss so come back with any questions that you would have as well right all right <laughs> seems that uh, most of you are happy the class has come to an end <laughs> no but it's really interesting but we need to concentrate and read yes. the book of no. course yeah all right then everyone take care and a good night i will see you morning for meditation there on sunday there on sunday bhante there on sunday bhante there on sunday